everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back for another Web Dev Wednesday where we are actually working with our website again. The last couple weeks have been a little funky, but we are back on schedule here. So we're back with our site. It's exactly the same as it was last week where we talked about media queries and we are styling based on our different viewports. But today we are going to make this a little bit more interesting using a transition property in CSS to make a bit of an effect here without using JavaScript or anything 100% CSS. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is have this website, when you hover over the image, it's going to display a different image. And instead of going in and replacing the image over here in our HTML, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky and just tuck the extra image underneath this one, hide it, and then use a transition to make the front image disappear so it looks like the image is being replaced with the new one. So to start off, I'm just gonna hop into my HTML here and as you can see over here, this is our site file here. And in my images folder, I do have three new images here, under one, under two, and under three. They're just what I'm gonna put underneath my, my original images. So I'm just going to hop another image tag in here. I will put together the markup and then meet you back here to animate them. Okay, so I've got my images over here. If we refresh our page, you'll see we have two images in each spot here. But remember, we want these to be hidden underneath. So we're going to need to do a little bit of initial styling before we get into our transition. So I'm going to add some classes. So first and foremost, I think with our media queries, these are going to be styled a little bit funky. So I might have to add some new classes there because remember in our CSS, we're targeting our first and last of type images. I already removed it, but it was, you know, image first of type and image last of type and that would target because we only had three images the first and the third one and we alternated them but I'm gonna have to because I've got two images now in each little unit I'm going to add some classes right in my markup so let's do class left class left this is our image on the right, so that one we're not going to give this class. I'll do it to these two down here. And then in my CSS, I can give it a new rule here for image dot left. And again, this is any image with the class of left. And I'm going to float it left. Oh, look at this. That's what I was working with before. Okay. So now the regular images are floating right, but if it has the class of left, we're going to float it left. If we refresh, now at least they're, see, alternating here. But again, we got to get the image underneath the other one. So I'm going to add another class to the top images. And when you're, you can add multiple classes here, just separate them with a space. So for this image, I'm going to give it another class of front image. And this just means this image here has two classes. It has, it has the class left and it has the class front image. And I'm going to do that for all of them. This one didn't have the class left, so it just gets front image. And then for our third one, I can again hop, pop it right in here next to this left class, give it front image and save. And now we can use that. I'm going to use my cascade though, so I'm going to do it right down here. We'll do image dot front image. So any image with the class front image, this is how we're going to hide it. I'm going to use my position property and give it an absolute position. So that should remove it from the flow of the document, put it in its position, but on top of whatever is next to it. And as you can see now, our images are hidden. Again, if I just remove this to demonstrate, before our images were in order in the document. They weren't positioned specially, 
But here, if I put in my absolute position for just the front image of each of those units, now they're both still here in the document, but because this image has the absolute position, it's sort of popped out of the document and covers that other one. Um, and now for our effect. So opacity just means how see-through an image is. I'm going to give this an opacity of 1. It's either 1 or 0. 0 means it's see-through, 1 means it's opaque. Anywhere in between is going to be... So like I could give it a 0.5 opacity and it's going to be halfway see-through. See? But I'm going to give it 1. The front image is opaque, so it covers the bottom one. And now I'm going to do an effect where I'm targeting the image with the class front image while it's being hovered over. Remember that's how we do our pseudo class here. While it's being hovered over, the opacity of that front image is going to go to zero, making it see through so we can see the image underneath. If we refresh here, it looks the same until we hover over our image and then it, it disappears, revealing the one underneath. All the front images are targeted like that. This is kind of jarring, right? It sort of just pops into the new image. I don't want that. I want it to be a smoother transition. Here's where our new property comes in. So we're putting it on the front image. We're giving it some, transi some transition properties. So there's a bunch of these. We can do, we can break it up or we can shorthand it. I'll show you each part of it individually before we put it together. So transition property, you're telling the browser, hey, this is what we're going to transition when when we need. So you can have like background color as the transition, you can have position as a transition, all sorts of things. But remember, what we are changing when we hover over is opacity. So our transition property is going to be opacity. Transition duration is how long the transition lasts. So is it going to change gradually over a few seconds? Or is it going to be really quick in a half a second? Let's just do a one second duration. You can do it in seconds or you can do it in milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds is the same as one second. 0.5 seconds is the same as 500 milliseconds. But let's just go straight forward. We're going to do the second. And then another one I'm going to use is transition timing function. So this tells the transition how fast, no, like the pace, I suppose. Not how, so the duration is how long the transition lasts, and the transition timing function tells it the pace. So you can do any of these. You can ease, ease in, ease in out, and this just means it's you know fast at the beginning and it slows down. Steps, you can do it in increments. Like if a good one to use for increments is if you're changing the color of something. I think the steps works well. For us, we're just gonna do we're just gonna do linear. That just means it's a straight line, it's not faster at one point of the transition and slower at another. It's just straightforward, straight through. You can also add transition delay. If you don't want it to happen right away, you can give it a delay again, either in milliseconds or seconds. And I believe that is all. I'm not gonna do a delay. I want it to be pretty instantaneous. If we save this, so the opacity, when it changes, it's gonna take one second and it's gonna be linear. Now, if we refresh this page, you can see it it's not instantaneous anymore. It's sort of fading in and out slowly, which is what we wanted. But we don't have to have three lines of code to do this. We can do it all in one transition. And you just put these, the same things we are entering for each individual property all in one. So we're changing the opacity over the duration of one second and we want it to be linear. And I can erase the other two and save, refresh, same thing and we only needed one line of code to do it. Now, let's see, this is going a little too slow for me. Maybe I want it to be a little bit faster. Easy enough. I can do 500 milliseconds. It'll be twice as fast. Bam. And we can also do any effect. So let's say we want the top image to kind of curve up while it fades. We can add another another set of transitions. So I'm going to put this back the way it was and add another transition. Let's have it be a transform. And this is a new property, but I'm just going to, when I hover over it, I want to transform my image. Let's just rotate it along the x-axis 180 degrees. Now 
these should work together and the duration is applied to both. If I wanted them to have different durations, you know, I could do this and this and they would, I believe, just apply in order. So the one second goes with the opacity, the half second goes with transform, linear with opacity, ease with transform, etc. Let's test this out. I refresh my page. I didn't like that. Do these need to have a comma? Maybe it's a comma separated list. Yeah, these need to have commas between them. My bad. Trial and error. We know and love it. Okay, so if I save this and refresh. There, now it's flipping over. You know what? I don't want it to rotate X. I want it to just rotate the whole image. So if I refresh this now. There, it's flipping it over and fading it out. Although the fade is slower than the flip, I kind of want it to be the opposite. So let's have our opacity change in half a second and our transform change in one second. Let's see how that looks. And again, look, you can mix and match your units here. You can have a milliseconds with a seconds. They work together well. So we refresh. Here, it's not even letting me hover over it. There we go. That's what I want. Here, we can look at this a little bit wider screen. Oop, this one didn't line up properly. Oh, probably because of my media queries. It targets the styles differently. So does this work full screen? No. Yeah, I need to update my media query. But, it, but this way, the way that we initially styled it, it works. It flips it and it fades it when we hover over it, revealing the image underneath. Okay, check it out. I think to fix this problem where it's on full screen, the, the other images are fine. They're where they're supposed to be, but it's this rightmost one, the image that doesn't have the left class that's not really in the right position. So I think if I just go into my CSS and for the image, not with the left class, I'm just going to give it actually... I'm going to give it, I'm going to give this front image a class of right. So the same way these two have two classes, left and front image, this one has right and front image so that I can target this image with the right class. I'm going to, I think if I just do left zero, maybe if I do right front image, I can target both. Oh, left. <laughs> Need it to be right, but it looks like it's going to do it. There we go. So now I just targeted this, the front image on the right and had its position. Since it is absolute, I can control its position. I had it be zero from the right. So now it covers this one. My browser is kind of delaying my transition, but should work just fine. All right, easy fix. And it still works the way we targeted it on our smaller screen. So these are all compatible with media queries with responsive design. You just have to sort of test it at its different breakpoints and make sure it works the way you want it to. All right, that's pretty much it for an initial introduction to transitions here. There's a lot more you can do with this, with these CSS properties. This is just an example of something that you might think you need JavaScript or some something fancy to make an effect on your page, but you can do it all with CSS. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I will see you all next week.